What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, enjoyed by Shannon Times. What's up? What's up? What's going on? And returning to the podcast, we have Daniel Acevedo. I always say your name wrong. <laughs> no worries. Let's go, guys. There it is. So we uh, this is like a reunion. This is like back at Langley right here. So uh, Langley Air Force Base. Um, so for all those who are tuning in, so uh, Monday and Tuesday are topics, Wednesday discussion. Thursdays will be Ask a CISSP. Um, so I have an interview with, um, it should be Chelsea Pierre this week. And then Fridays, everything else, movies, books, games, all that good stuff. So definitely tune in throughout the week. Subscribe to the newsletter where you get a, a recap of everything, a one-stop shop. Uh, and with all that being said, uh, I pass it to Shannon. All right, everybody. So this uh, this article comes from WHDH.com, right? And it's titled, Police Take Down $249 a Month Global Phishing Service Used by 2,000 Hackers, right? So we had to believe this was going to happen, right? This sub subscription service type thing when it comes to these cyber criminals, right? Like they follow all the other stuff, right? They've got their own court system. They got all these things that make them seem so legit and normal, right? Like we we see Microsoft following this model. Why, why not? The, why not the criminals too, right? Like every, every, everybody yeah, that makes money, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like for real. Makes money does a subscription service. You know what I mean? So, Ryan, think on that, man. Like, is, is this is this how we're going to do it? Right. But, but anyway, right, so um, the gist of this here, right, is law, law enforcement officials in 19 countries, right, they shut down an online platform, right, that was earning, that earned a million dollars by selling fishing kits to cyber criminals, right? So we've seen this before where we get the multinational stuff, right? So this one was actually head up by the Metropolitan Police in the United Kingdom, um, and they targeted uh, lab hosts, right? So what's what's going on here? They had 37 suspects, got arrested, 70 locations that they went to, uh, searched in the UK, across the world. And this was in a matter of like four days, right? So again, million dollars. These guys have made, well, it's a million pounds is what, what they have here, right? Because it happened in the UK. So it was one, what was it? 1,173,000 in payments from criminal, criminal users, right? But they went in there and they shut it down, right? So uh, they talk about all the stuff that they've obtained here, right? So lab hosts, they have four, 480,000 bank card numbers, 64,000 PIN numbers, as well as more than 1 million passwords, right? Um, used for websites and other online services. And and when you have when you have those passwords, right, it's one of those things where we, we, we've told people this before, not to recycle passwords, right? It's not what you want to do because for situations like this, right, it only takes... The, it only takes uh, cyber criminals getting a hold of one password. And then, you know, usually when it comes to the setup for these, it's like, okay, well, we already have the, we have the username, which is usually the email, right? So what do they do? Let's, let's just try it, right? Yeah. Email, password that we got. Let's try it across all these different platforms. You know what I'm saying? And they usually get you. That's why they tell you not to do those types of things. But, uh, you know, nobody's listening out there, right? If people were listening, we wouldn't be doing this podcast, right? We wouldn't, <laughs> we would, we wouldn't be out here putting all this out there. But yeah, police, police out there, they out there doing these these multinational uh, stings, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the stuff that movies need to be made of, right? It's probably not as exciting when it's cyber stuff. Like, when you do a sting, you got to be able to do something different. But, yeah, it's it's uh, it's crazy how they're out here making, making waves uh, out there in the U.K., but. Here we are, you know what I'm saying? But Dan, what's your thoughts on this, man? Now, man, you hit like almost all the points I had made for myself. I'm like, <laughs> when I read this, when I read this article, I'm like, man, they like the executives over at Amazon and Netflix are probably trying to like cover this to make a TV series. This is straight out of like a Jack <laughs> Reacher kind of thing. When you talk about like multinational, like Metro Police and Europol, that's like their FBI. That's like that's such a big operation, right? And they shut down a crossover like different countries. Like, are you talking for real? Like, that's straight up like Jack Reacher stuff right there, man. Um, and so we hit it up. We hit it up last last uh, week's article that we were talking about the same thing, like using password managers. You know, when you do one breach and then you go across all the different platforms that you use as a person, you know, either your social media, your banks, health, whatever it is, right? People re re reusing those passwords and those usernames. It's so easy for the bad guys to then just reuse and just try to like get into all your facets of your life, right? 
Um, and, you know, we talked to Ryan about it last week too. Like he mentioned it in previous episodes. Hey, this is the year to just change your passwords. And I think that's like good grooming in the cyber realm nowadays. I think it's like low level basic things that people have to do day in and day out. Just kind of like maybe at a yearly rotation, you know, take them. Like I said last week, like the two, four, six hours, whatever it is, to just go in there and just reuse or, or, or rechange all your passwords and usernames because like these kind of attacks, these breaches that these guys are doing, it's such low hanging fruit to like screw up your life, you know, and it just takes them to get into your bank account or credit card and then affect your credit that, you know, it's just done at that point for you or your family, especially if you've been building up your credit for a long time and you're not monitoring it. Then all of a sudden your credit score goes down and you can't like buy a car, buy a house, all those kind of things. But it's just for me, like the scope of this is kind of crazy. Just the, the multinational different country kind of thing. Um, you know, and, and it's like you were saying, like the the service to the hackers as a SaaS, like I call it dark SaaS myself, but you know, phishing as a service is kind of like kind of crazy. I like call it a dark SaaS, just give it like a nickname, but we're seeing all these things. Like I didn't know when, when I read the article, I was like, okay, so they're using phishing stuff. But then in, in the articles, it talks about phishing kits. So I kind of Googled that. I was like, what is a phishing kit? And then my mind is like, it's gotta be like, you know, automated stuff that you don't have to like do anything. Pretty much that's where it was. This service was so like uh, sophisticated and user-friendly to the hackers that it would even give them like potential targets in different industries both like financial and I think it was like medical that it's like ridiculous. So it's like, it's like a full service, right? Like you get your money, money's worth here, like $249, you get potential clients, <laughs> you get the tools to, to target them, the, not only the scripts to ex execute the tools, but also like automated scripts of like what you could say in the emails for the phishing attempts. I mean, it's, it's like full circle, like how sophisticated phishing attempts have come these days how easy it is and how low level skills you need to have as a hacker to actually execute these things that, you know, we really need to be like telling our family members and our loved ones kind of like basic grooming things like, Hey, look at the email address, hover over links to make sure that they're actually from who's sending you and those like basic things that we need to do to protect ourselves. Uh, but pretty much that's everything I looked, you know, lab Rat was the, the person executing the attack. There was a mention of like the type of phishing tool they use. It was, it was something with lab as well or rat as well. I shouldn't have done it. Like I tried to Google for my home, my home, home computer. I was kind of curious, like what the tool actually involved. And all I got was this article over and over again, which is, I'm pretty happy that I didn't do that. And I tried to go to the dark web and figure it out myself, but I don't know. What do you think, Ryan? What are your thoughts? No, I, I appreciate it. Uh, like, so for all those who may just be uh, tuning in, I disappeared for a little bit. My, my whole rig crapped that. <laughs> so I appreciate y'all holding it down. Uh, so my thoughts are please like, share, subscribe so I can buy a new rig. Um, <laughs> I, need, I need your patronage to fix my computer. No, uh, in all seriousness, please like, share, subscribe. We're trying to get our, our uh, subscriber count up on YouTube. Uh, and we are trying to do more with the platform, reach more people. So check out the newsletter. We have over a thousand uh, subs. I think we're almost at 1,100. So definitely uh, subscribe to that as well if you have not already on both LinkedIn or Medium. But um, yeah, when I when I saw this uh, this particular article, I was like, this would be a good one for us to talk about. Because um, last week when uh, it was just me, uh, Chris, and uh, and Daniel, we we talked about something similar where um, ransomware gangs were kind of uh, using business models to do things that were nefarious, but make them. They, it just seems it seems well crafted and very legitimate, like uh, which leads me to believe that some of these people were good guys at some point, right? And they're taking their talents because <laughs> they've been dumped out by the uh, the layoffs, and they're they're building better business models over on the uh, the bad guy side. So I don't I don't know uh, if I should should give them as much credit as I do because I'm just like this is amazing. <laughs> and I'm always. Uh, I'm just, it's, it's, uh, it's always intriguing to see how they, they, they adapt like the, the Netflix business model and, uh, Microsoft's business model to, uh, to fit their needs, but also how dangerous it is, right? Like the more successful you are, the more eyes will be on you. So Interpol or not Interpol, I think it was Europol. Europol was on their, on their tail pretty fast, um, just because of how much havoc, uh, their clients were were uh, bringing upon the uh, the the banking uh, 
industry and 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 uh, their clients. So I, I don't know. Like uh, I, obviously, crime doesn't pay, right? It pays up front, and then you have to on the back end. <laughs> you you're in uh you know not the nicest of prisons <laughs> pain in a different way but um it's always interesting so i, I can see this being uh, adopted here in the states as well if it's not already being used in the states uh and having more content or articles pop up as we start to see the department of justice and what have you start to crack down on companies doing the same thing distributing this uh this ransomware um as a service to uh, your your black hats, your alfies, your um, your revils, things of that nature, um, to cause I guess maximum pain on this side. Um, so we'll see what the future holds. Uh, again, I apologize for the cutting in and out. Is this <laughs> the rest of this week will be smooth? I promise. Um, so so real quick, so like with, with you bringing that up, right? Like you, I think we are going to see it more. But even within the last year, like we've done a few articles where it's been the multinational stuff, right? Where yeah, it's yeah, all these yeah. countries getting together because it's beneficial to all, right? Um, and, and sometimes it's just needed. Like some of these, some of these smaller countries just may not have the resources to go after the Russias, you know, the North Koreas, the China, right? That have floors of people that are just, you know, what I mean, doing yeah, doing yeah. this type of work, especially the nation state stuff, like the nation state actors and like the bigger ones. Yeah, what's curious to me is. That I wonder, like, fishing as a service is pretty profitable because it's easy to execute. Right. I wonder if we're going to start seeing, you know, some type of, like, infrastructure or platform services in the dark web as a, as a means for these hackers as well. I don't know what that would look like, but anything that's, like, a, like a software as a service right. is very easy to execute for these guys. But I wonder if it's going to start trickling into some of the other stuff. I, I can see that from your sites, right? Like if the Department of Justice knocks you down, there's already another site that you can pop right back up. That's um, true. So, I, I mean, it may already exist, right? Like, um, Probably. Uh, yeah. Where you have your, your uh, Google uh, like a, equivalent. Like, a, like, a, like, a, <laughs> like a, a cloud platform or something like that yeah. where they just have the whole infrastructure built in with, like, you know, Kali Linux or, like, whatever kind of hacking tools they use and then take one down and spin one up, you know, using containers or whatever. Yeah, that's that's, that's true. true. And AI is only going to make it easier to implement. For real. Yeah, it's very true. I, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. Technology <laughs> will kill us all. I'm just saying. Skynet. <laughs> Skynet's coming for us. So, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what the future holds. But it, I'm I'm excited to see um, how quickly uh, these international uh, groups are, and coalitions are coming together to, to bring these, these, uh, these gangs down. But it's, it's the the more aggressive you are and the more sophisticated you are, the more like it's, it's spy versus spy. So now they become more sophisticated and it just keeps, continues to roll on. Right. Um, so we'll, we'll see what the future holds. It's, uh, it's fascinating. Right. So I, I'm, I'm glad to see how quickly we're able to shut it down, but also I'm always intrigued at, uh, how they just deliver a new offering, um, yeah. on the bad guy side. So, uh, with that being said, definitely continue to tune in throughout the week. Again, Monday, Tuesday, our, our, I can't speak. Our hour, there it is, topics. Uh, and then Wednesday is a discussion. Thursdays will be Ask CISSP. And then Fridays, everything else, movies, twists, games, all that good stuff. So definitely tune in for all that. Like, share, subscribe to all the platforms that you uh, you somehow uh, found us on so we can retain you, right? Come back. We don't just want to be one-offs. Uh, and then subscribe to the newsletter, right? If you want time to tune in throughout the entire week, you can always get a recap every Friday. It's delivered right to your inbox. So. Stay safe, stay secure.